Casey Selden, everybody. All right, all right, now I know what you're all thinking. You've been hearing these stories all night long, and oh my God, you know, white people didn't take everything from everybody else. You know, things were stolen from white people too. For example, Napoleon's penis. <laughs> and to tell you the story of Napoleon's penis, Ryan Galliotto, everybody. I'm Ryan, and um, wait, did I hit a switch? You pushed the button. I didn't push the button. Check, check. You pushed the button. <laughs> I didn't touch the button. All right. Hi, Hi, I'm Ryan. Take two. Um, so Napoleon pictured here. Oh, God, that's really small. Can, you, can I make that in big and? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making that larger for my old eyes. All right, so. Napoleon is pictured here by Paul Delaroche's 1814 portrait, is easily one of the most famous people of his time. And since we're still talking about him, probably history too. Um, he weaponized nationalism and had a great run at empire building. Until that little snack at Waterloo. That was June of 1815. By October, he was exiled to a small British island of St. Helena off the west coast of Africa. And for those keeping track, this was his second exile, because the first one didn't do so well. You'll notice this one has a nice feature of being very remote. <laughs> it stuck this time. Nap Napoleon remained here until he died in his cottage named Longwood, which might be funny later, um, <laughs> in St. Helena in June of eight, 1821. And that's where this story begins, with his autopsy. Um, oh, we're gonna make this uh, touch screen. Too big, too big, too big. <laughs> there we go. Wait, too small. All right, thank you. Now you show me how you can fix it. Okay, so uh, this is Dr. Francesco Atomarchi. I practiced that a lot and I still fumbled on it. Um, he was a Napoleon's physician at St. Helena, and he was actually sent there requested by his Napoleon's mother. Um, he was among. Uh, he was among the 17 British and French officials that attended his autopsy. And what do you think all these fine, upstanding gentlemen of society did in the presence of such celebrity? They snuck out pieces of the man. Yeah. We're talking locks of hair, nail clipping, strips of the bloody bedsheet itself, teeth, bits of organs. And our good doctor was also one of the gruesome collectors. Aramachi snuck out with Napoleon's death mask, which he made, though somebody else claimed making, and it was a broken one, so if he walked out with the one he made or not, we are not sure. But still, he made a death mask. He also walked out with bits of his intestines and or ribs. And while our good doctor had distinguished himself as a, in his medical career before going to St. Helena, uh, there was... Napoleon dismissed him several times, only to allow him to resume shortly thereafter. So, you know, they had an off-again, on-again uh, relationship. Uh, you could say Napoleon was a very difficult, possibly. He may not have been one of the most uh, gracious of patients. Um, but in the end, not only did he get his pound of flesh out of Napoleon, but the good doctor also wrote the book. The Last Moments of Napoleon, a bestseller at the time. Um, afterwards, the good doctor had moved, uh, moved on. In 1831, he served as the general inspector for Poland before fleeing Poland from Russian Tsar's forces to make it back safely to Paris. Later, he immigrated to Louisiana, where he donated the famous death mask, the bronze death mask, to the city of New Orleans. Napoleon's chaplain, uh, Abby Ange, uh, Ange Vignal, God, you, you practice these names a lot. 
before coming up here, it doesn't matter. The bright lights and you still. Uh, Vignali walked away with the winner, the main prize. According to the 1852 memoir by uh, Rive de Maud by Napoleon's valet Ali, the Abbey serpentitiously severed and removed Napoleon's penis and walked off with it. The Abbey even boasted of this treasure, this most intimate part of the royal anatomy, once he was safely away in home in Corsica. The Abbey also walked off with a lot of other things, uh, including Napoleon's silver travel cup, a pair of his white breeches, a waistcoat, a handkerchief, hair from his head, and body. Like I said, gruesome collectors. Um, he was killed a few years later. Uh, it was in uh, 1828, probably an unrelated local feud, but you never know. And his sister, not pictured here, uh, Roxanne Vignali Gionettini, inherited the collection. And it was a, a vast collection of, of uh, relics. The rest of Napoleon remained in St. Helena for 20 years until the British finally allowed the French to move his body to Paris. Sister Roxanne did not take this opportunity to reunite the body parts and forward the pe Napoleon's penis to the rest of his body. As a matter of fact, Sister Roxanne kept the collection in the family. Thus, it gained the name Vignali Collection. Her son, Charles Marie Giannettini, sold the collection during the Great War in 1816. Uh, the collection went to the British booksellers, the Mags Brothers, fine rare booksellers by royal warrant of Her Majesty the Queen since 1853. They are still in business, have a wonderful collection, and all I can say is road trip. <laughs> Don't wait too far. Um, the Mag Brothers then sold their collection only eight years later in 1924 to an American collector, A.S.W. Rosenbach for the sum of 400 pounds, which is worth about $28,000 today. This is when Napoleon's penis moved across the Atlantic to Philadelphia. <laughs> ASW, Abraham Simon Wolf, and his older brother, Philip Rosenbach, formed a business simply known as the Rosenbach Company. And they were famous for dealing in rare books and manuscripts, and they had prestigious clients. Maybe not the queen, but J.P. Morgan counts for America, right? He was a queen, right? <gasps> I have known men to hazard their fortunes, go long journeys halfway around the world, forget friendships, even lie, cheat, and steal, all for the gain of a good book. He might fit in here. In 27, ASW put the collection on display in New York City at the Museum of French Arts. Time magazine referred to the Napoleon's penis as a maltreated strip of buckskin shoelace. Yeah. <laughs> it was 100 years old at this point. I mean, come on. Over 100. But uh, another paper referred, referred, to, uh, referred to it as a shriveled eel. In 1969, Dr. J. John K. Latimer purchased Napoleon's penis and only Napoleon's penis out of the Vignali collection of Napoleonic relics. Dr. Latimer was one of the U.S.'s leading urologists <laughs> and a renowned medical investigator. He was, chosen, he was even chosen by the, the Kennedy family to examine the John F. Kennedy's autopsy evidence. And his results were in support of the lone gunman theory. Um, it's reported that he kept Napoleon's penis in a case underneath his bed in Inglewood, New Jersey. Sadly, he passed away in 2007, and the penis then passed to his daughter, Yvonne Latimer. <laughs> and, while, and while she is known to have shown it to a few people, including the author of uh, Napoleon's Privates, which was probably an inspiration for a lot of us <laughs> for this topic, um, she didn't allow any pictures of it, and so there are no actual pictures of the current penis. It was medically confirmed to be a penis, but for some strange reason, I don't know why, the French government are not going to, have not agreed to exhume Napoleon's body to do a DNA check. So to sum up, Napoleon's chaplain or his physician severed the penis. 
Napoleon's chaplain then boasted he took the penis to Corsica. He died. His sister, his sister then kept it. The family then sold Napoleon's penis to uh, the Mag brothers in England. They then sold it to ASW in, in Philadelphia, who then sold it to the urologist, who then went to the daughter. This is a well-traveled member. Oh. I've actually, it's been very hard. Uh, difficult, difficult. I've been really trying not to go for the obvious jokes because I figure we're all intelligent people here. But again, at this point, do you want to see it? Do you really want to see it? Well, unfortunately, I can only show you a facsimile. Will that do? So before I leave you with a possibly disturbing image of a over 100-year-old fossilized, well, not quite fossilized, uh, part of anatomy from a famous Frenchman, I would like to raise a, a toast to those deprived people that are collectors out there. Sometimes you go too far, but without you going too far, stealing stuff from white guys, there would be less stories. So I leave you with Napoleon's penis. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Ryan Galliota, everybody. Let's just stare at that right now. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand.